Now there are not many things that would get me up on a Sunday morning out on a wintry day rain down here at Hollywell Golf Club but I am uh, I took delivery of a new driver head I've got a feeling it could be quite interesting and you might see a paradigmic shift what are your thoughts on the new Callaway Paradigm driver yeah, the sheep here at Hollywell had a similar opinion to me in terms of what I first seen of the Callaway Paradigm driver. It was, in fact, the triple diamond head that I tried. I had issues with the looks. I also still have a few issues with the name, but they're all put to one side because what I've got in my hands now is the standard Paradigm model. And yes, it is very interesting. Thoughts on the new Callaway Paradigm driver. And that's exactly why first shot of the day, first swing of the day out here on the golf course and straight away my opinion of this Callaway Paradigm driver is that it is hot off the face. I've also collected some dry ball data earlier on this morning at Hollywell which also suggests this thing is getting the ball out there. Some of the numbers I've achieved, some of the parameters I've achieved in terms of all dry ball data suggests this is a really interesting driver. And that's what we're about to look at in today's video. Now, the first thing to note between the triple diamond, which was the only sample I and many other YouTubers had to test earlier on last week, the difference between that and the paradigm standard is the chevron returns in terms of the center of the crown and to me straight away it frames the ball a whole lot better so i don't really understand why it doesn't appear on the triple diamond because i can only see negatives for me personally at least because just having that help that assistance of that chevron really seems to focus some attention on where exactly the center of that club face is that's the first change the first addition and the first positive I've got about the new Paradigm over the Paradigm Triple Diamond. This isn't a head-to-head, -head, of course. So as I address the second ball of the day, um, just to confirm again, having a chevron there is huge for me in terms of no messing, address the ball. I am going to kind of work things out in terms of where that centre of the club face is. So that's a big plus for me. Love the shaping of the Paradigm standard head as well. And don't forget, this is all about this 360 degree carbon chassis, which has shifted weight considerably to concentrate on two things. MOI, which for me is ultimately that forgiveness and also ball speeds and also to be able to place that weight, which can have an impact on spin and controlling spin. And I can tell you from dry ball data, they've achieved that in abundance and I think we should have a quick look at that dry ball data before we go any further. The other point to mention is that's two drives straight down the middle. Now from the dry ball data, you're gonna notice a few things and that's first one is the launch on this thing. Launches the ball incredibly high, which again, to me is perhaps a little bit high in this current setup, but a real positive for a lot of average golfers that assistance in getting driver airborne is massive. But you'll also see that it doesn't impact too severely on spin. And we've got a really good controllable spin number. And then of course, ultimately we're looking at distance. Nice to see if we can get off to a decent start. Ooh, that was right on line as well. Now you'll notice there's just four balls hit inside, which is a very small sample of data. But straight away, I knew that uh, the consistency within those four shots was, uh, well, very, very similar indeed. So that's a huge positive. That carry number of 240 yards or there or thereabouts is again, my optimum number with the way I swing the club. That call with that launch and that spin, really, really good in terms of uh, what it did in dry ball data. And that's why I'm always keen to get it out on the golf course and see what it does in reality. And trust me, in this weather, this is reality. And personally, in terms of dry ball data, I've really lost interest in that yardage carry number. Now that may sound like an odd thing to say because ultimately with driver, we wanna hit it as far as we possibly can. 
but we mustn't forget that ultimately all drivers are governed by rules that, and restrictions. I know that no matter what happens with any driver released, if I'm hitting it around 240 yards carry with my swing speed, then that's as much as I am ever gonna get out of a driver head. So it's hitting that number. What I then wanna see is a consistency of numbers. And when I talk about consistency of numbers, I also would quantify forgiveness in that set of data. But more realistic than data is what does it do out on the fairway? The data suggests that it was very consistent across all those key parameters. And one other thing I'm key and interested in out here on the fairways is does it actually find the middle of the fairway and how often? And based on the fact we've now hit three drives and found three fairways and the ball has traveled incredibly straight. I have been warmed up this morning. Like I said, I hit balls earlier on in the custom fit studio here at Hollywell. And that's a big advantage. It's not like I'm turning up it in the first ball of the day and I'm swinging it good, but I can't help but recognize just how consistent this paradigm driver is. It also feels and sounds incredibly good. And the one thing that I had such an issue with is the way this driver looks. I didn't really buy into it in terms of off the shelf. What I can say is I've not took one blind bit of notice of what it looks like this morning because all I'm interested in is the performance and I'm persuaded already to overcome my issue with the looks. Right, so take a little bit of cover just to talk about this standard paradigm model because we've got that weighting system in the back which is set in the neutral position. And obviously there's a, a considerable amount of difference that I've always seen when club testing by shifting to that draw and fade bias. And there's obviously the adjustability in the loft. I'm playing a 10 and a half degree head in that uh, sort of standard setting. But also a big point to note is the shaft. I'm using a hazardous 5.5, 50 gram at a reg shaft 50 gram fairly light and it's a very very user friendly shaft if you like certainly at my sort of swing speed which although indoors when you're recording data it can be 95 to topping out at 100 i think the reality is when you get out on the golf course and why i enjoy on course testing so much is that swing speed and tempo generally drops off when you've got to consider other things predominantly finding the fairway so i think i'm only swinging in the low 90s and this reg set up with that 10 and a half degree head. You've seen the launch angle we're achieving without a compromise in a high spin number. I think it's a really good setting. And I've come back out to play what was the second hole of the day. Because I've got to say, I really am enjoying hitting this because A, from a confidence perspective and finding fairways, I'm loving the sound and feel. And right now we've hit three from three and I just really want to know how long we can continue this for. Is it all down to the swing, which is obviously a major part in this, but I love the way in terms of how tight this dispersion has been, both indoor and out here in the golf course. So I think we'll hit one more from what is the eighth tee here up at Hollywell. If we find another fairway, then I think it's fair to say I have made that paradigmic shift. Who likes that word, by the way? What I want to try and do is just, I like to set up for a slight fade, nice easy swing, and just cut in off that left hand side. And just that high ball flight, it's firing off the club face. And that's exactly where I want to be yet again. So yeah, it's just doing it out here on the fairways, which is what is the key bit for me. So the key for me in terms of the performance out here on the course is it's been a replication in terms of what I've seen in terms of dry ball data, which is always key, but you always like to see it. That's a high launching ball. It doesn't seem to be spinning too greatly, although again, that's impossible to measure out on the golf course. The carry distance has been consistent, as has dispersion. And if you look very closely at the dispersion from inside, just that small group of shots, my shot shape that little left to right it was consistent in its performance and uh, like i said that's exactly what it's done out here on the golf course i've got to say that forgiveness is a difficult one to um to comment on i know that it's what 
driver manufacturers discuss MOI and forgiveness, but how do we quantify it when we do a test? Well, for me, all I can consider is this. I've hit four drives today on the golf course. I know from, and as you know, from my swing variables, the likelihood of me finding that club face in the center each time is probably slim to none, but the performance has stayed consistent and therefore to me, that club face is performing right across it and performing a consistency of numbers in all parameters. It really is a really good driver offering the foot together here. And the key for me, the triple diamond with a 60 gram stiff shaft just didn't work for me. You put in a 50 gram reg shaft, you put a 10 and a half degree head in that standard paradigm and all of a sudden it is a different animal in my hands altogether. So, so forgiving, so fast in terms of ball speeds, sounds really good. I'm still not over enamored by the looks. That is not something that's gonna change. It's still not my personal choice in terms of a color scheme and the way this thing is put together. But overall, you cannot knock the performance and I think it's a definitely one to put on the list. You're gonna have this, the G430 Stealth 2, the new driver from Srixen. Um, I, if I've missed anyone, I apologize. They're hitting some decent numbers right now, all these drivers, and it's about finding the key elements that uh, really float your boat and what it is you're trying to achieve. But the key is making sure you get the right driver head and shaft combination because there's huge differences between each setup, trust me. Right, I'm gonna get warm. It is a miserable day. I enjoyed that, but only because I was testing a new product and uh, you wouldn't have got me out here for any other reason. Right, I'm going in. Thank you for watching. See you soon.